Sparks flew at a contentious hearing on Capitol Hill yesterday as former female athlete Riley Gaines sparred with various Democratic members of Congress over the issue of trans athletes competing against biological women. Now, one clip that went viral saw Gaines arguing with Florida Congresswoman Summer Lee. Such as teamwork and goal setting. In terms of mental health, studies show that participating in youth sports is associated with lower rates of anxiety and depression, lower amounts of stress, higher self-esteem and confidence. Women must stop. Inclusion cannot be prioritized over safety and fairness. And Ranking Member Lee, if my testi testimony makes me transphobic, then I believe your opening monologue makes you a misogynist. Thank you. Later during the hearing, Representative Jasmine Crockett referred to her home state of Texas and also Florida as deplorable, accusing a witness from the Heritage Foundation of pushing bills to put the country on the wrong track. Organization, the Heritage Foundation loves Texas. Ooh, they love Texas. They always sending us some nonsense bills um, that somehow set this country on the wrong trajectory. They send them to Texas. They send them to Florida. Every deplorable state that we can think about, they usually come in out of y'all's think tank. The Democrat called witnesses, uh, National Women's Law Center President Fatima Goss Graves, argued sports were essential for fostering a sense of belonging for trans students. And success in school sports depends on a whole range of factors, including how hard you work and coaching and access to really good resources and facilities. And trans students participate in sports for the same reason as their kids because it is fun, because it creates belonging and community, because it teaches so much about persistence and leadership and, and discipline, unless they learn to lose gracefully, hopefully. And often they learn to win with dignity, hopefully. Yeah, look, I, t I take her point that sports are a very valuable um, social, um, teamwork building um, experience for a lot of young people. Um, it makes school and life more enjoyable for a lot of young people. Um, I would never say that I wanted trans people to be excluded from sports. Um, they should be, they should be, no, they should be included. Um, the question is how to do that in a way that's fair to the other players. And, and, and yes, while it's fun and social, it is all, it is also a competition and particularly later in high school, um, it, it can matter a lot for for college and for the future. So it has to be you know fair to the women who are competing against transgender individuals. And we you know we've seen now plenty of cases where I don't think it's fair. So come up with some accommodation. You can have uh, if there are enough trans people in the sport. You, mean you can have a trans separate league or something like that. Um, I, I'm open to other suggestions. Um, we just want to make sure we're not erasing the category of women's sports because the competition is clearly unfair to them on some level in many cases. Yeah, I, I do think that, again, for the overwhelming majority of student athletes in the United States, the competitive disadvantage argument is kind of a non-starter. I think that that last... Um, Witness is right that most people are paying sports and playing sports not at an especially competitive level. I certainly wasn't when I was on my varsity basketball team, or varsity soccer team, angling for um, scholarships and the like. There are people who are, but most people are not. So I would like to just put make that acknowledgement and kind of put the, the bulk of it to the side, which is that most people are playing sports to learn these kind of valuable life lessons, to have camaraderie, to have fun, to be students in a school. Now, what to do about making the kind of more professionalized or lucrative aspects of competitive sports equitable, I think is a reasonable question. And it's one that the highest level of um, uh, 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 whatever it is, sportsmanship in the, in the Olympics has contended with. Now, if you want to specifically get into whether or not you think that they've managed that correctly, I think that's for people with a lot more medical expertise than either of us to uh, interrogate. But they have metrics that they've come up with that are based on whether or not the person has been on hormones for a sufficient amount of time, has hormone levels that are commensurate with the gender that they um, ascribe to now and the gender with whom they are competing and all of these other kinds of things to try to make it equitable. And I think that gets to two things. One, like the raw kind of physical equity of it, but two, also this idea that I think is in a lot of people's minds that a, a significant number of people who are not actually trans but are cis men trying to exploit the system will 
are, are going to be willing to do exactly that. Now, if you have to be on hormones for months and years of your life and have the physical consequences of that and the expenses associated with that, I mean, when you look at it that way, I do think that in practice, very few people, I'm not going to say no one, but very few people would be willing to go that far for a competitive advantage in a scholarship kind of scenario or even in a very high Olympic level. I mean, if there's a if there's a, an amount of, a length of time and amount of hormones being taken, where the advantage of having been born biologically male is sufficiently mitigated, I think that would be one thing. Um, but, but what we're seeing in in a lot of the college and high school cases are people who still clearly, physically, from a strength perspective, um, it may have. A transition to some degree, but clearly are retaining a massive advantage in swimming or running or wrestling. Um, I mean, it's it, it just biological reality that um, that even men, if male athletes who would not be who are not very who are not at the elite level, not very competitive with other males, are, are, are frankly still would be. I mean, Riley Gaines has said this before uh, when when she testified that her uh, her husband, I believe, or her boyfriend, I think it's her husband now, said that he was also a swimmer and for it, within males was not, was not an exceptional swimmer at all. But he, and, and she was, you know, very, she was much more, among female swimmers, she mm -hmm. was much more um, elite and had won more, and that he can beat her hands down every time, not even close. And that, you know, that, to some extent, I think that advantage is still transferred in, in, in the cases we've seen. You know, you're right to point out it's not a huge number of people, but if there's, but if there's a couple um, exceptional trans individuals, you know, in every, in every sport, I mean, they're going to be the ones winning the trophy. And it's not just about obviously the scholarship part matters too, but you know, it's so it's not just all fun and games. You can be you can be in between. I'm not, you know, racing or swimming necessarily for for. For college or for scholarship reasons, but you know, still as part of my enrichment as a young person wanting yeah. to win, and it being it being still competitive without serious financial or educational stakes, but it's still competitive. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that cuts both ways, right? Because remember that Riley Thomas tied with, um, uh, sorry, Riley Gaines tied with Leah Thomas for fifth place. So yes, there's. It is definitely true that Leah Thomas, who's the trans swimmer in question, was at a much higher level competing against women than she was competing against men. But it's also true that she didn't take the top spot, that there were four cis women that performed better than her and performed better than Riley Gaines. And so I do think that sometimes this gets framed as Riley Gaines was denied her first place or even second place or even third place, or that Riley Gaines, um, you know, she says, I went home without a trophy. She literally tied with Leah Thomas. So it, it, it's not to say that I think if I were I don't know, sixth place, I guess, or it's hard to say in this scenario because it was a tie scenario, but if I would have placed but for a trans woman, would there be questions about the competitive advantage and whether or not I lost something, I lost out on something material, perhaps because of that competitive advantage? I'm not going to sit here and gaslight people out of that reality. I do, though, wonder about whether or not people who are concerned about that are also similarly invested in figuring out how to create an equitable system where either that competitive advantage doesn't exist or there are altern alternative avenues for trans athletes to compete in ways that allow them to have the kind of um, uh, benefits of scholarships and those kinds of things that everybody else gets to, and more importantly, enjoy the joy and camaraderie of sportsmanship as opposed to feeling another level of isolation in a world that is off, all, already often so hostile to trans people. Yeah, I mean, I, you can understand, though, how this, how this sense of, in my view, understandable grievance comes to be that there were like, you know, there, there was five trophy, there was one fifth place trophy, and I think flipped a coin over who got it or something like that, and it went to Leah Thomas, and she's thinking that would have been my trophy if not for, you know, that this is person Is this all really about whether or not they, in... they print out an extra, they buy an extra trophy from the trophy store? Is that no, what all of these congressional hearings are it's about whether it was fair at? to have to hand it over to, again, she her, she takes the point of view that this person had advantages and shouldn't have been able to compete. And, and if the coin and flipped that. went the other way, would it all be there well in the world? There had to be a coin flip if... Um, if the standards she's asserting. And were if in Riley place. Gaines had tied with a cis woman and there had been a coin flip and the cis woman got to take the trophy and not Riley Gaines, would she have been similarly irritated? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I think her I mean, is no. that's, that's why this is so difficult. I do think, look, 
cards on the table, I do think that there are legitimate concerns about competitive advantage in the mix here. Of course there are. But so much of this argument, I think, has been co-opted by people who, who, who have some other concerns that are more about isolating and stigmatizing trans people. And that's, that's frankly, upsetting a, or, or undermining a more kind of grounded in science and fact and reality argument that could have been ha happening this entire time. And I think that a lot of people who might have been open to the idea that, oh, we should figure out and make sure that sports are fair for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. We sex segregated sports in the beginning because we wanted cis women to have an opportunity to compete. For it to be competitive. Right. Yeah. And so for that we should take this seriously. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of people who might be open to that, frankly, are chased away from this argument because they don't want to be in a place where folks are mad, not because they lost a trophy, but because they lost a trophy to a trans person in particular. And I don't mean to cast aspersions on Riley Gaines. I'm not trying to look into her heart and soul, but I think that's part of what's going on here culturally. Well, and but probably there's blowback the other way, which is that uh, uh, people, I mean, I, I certainly want to include, I have no malice towards trans people. I want them to do whatever they want to do and include them in um, life and have the same, you know, access to facilities and things of that nature. Um, it, it's clear, though, like a blowback is being engendered by examples of um, trans people winning in uh, sex, gender segregated sports where normal people go, well, that doesn't seem fair or to me. Or coming in fifth. Well, <laughs> I mean, there are, there are also, there Wait, are Wait, what, victors. a participation are, trophy? Robbie, well, <laughs> why is right. fifth place getting a trophy you anyway? You know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> you right. tell us how you feel about it. More rising right after this.